wanted you to read this piece yeah. because it's, it shows how Shlomo was able to make room for this person. I know that when I was in situations of this sort, I would very soon take an oppositional attitude and not include him. This was a great thing that he did by calling the ship to look at this wonderful yid and, and he brings him into the situation. And I've seen this in so many other ways. Arun Shlomo did that. For me, this was a lesson. And I wanted that to come after that first piece that you were reading, where there was this difference, this attitude when first he came. And here, uh, how he brings it in and, and so on. Because it's true. Tversky sees you guys with the secrets and knowledge. You know, uh, couldn't, couldn't have gotten it. Then, but when this man comes and says he's the president of the Orthodox Shul and he brings him right in and says, and then he, he says, you're right, you're, he does not say you're wrong, but you're right about the toenails. Just that amazing difference that was there, that was wonderful. I didn't come so early into that time you know, with the House of Mind. Could you hold the mic closer? Yeah, it was by the 70s that I got there. You were there in you were there in '68. I was there in '68. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, uh, Reb Shlomo invited you to come to the house and spend the Shabbos with us, so you did. Uh -huh. And um, at that time, you had these silver rings that said Gamze Yavor on them. Yes. Right. Yeah. And um, you spent Shabbos with us, you know, and you, you sort of were going over the story of, of King Solomon about how this ring came to King Solomon, and this this had the answer to the question that he had been what asking. Was it Ayn's, Ayn, what's the name? Ayn, Ayn Rand? Yeah. Yeah. Was it this house? This was at the House of Love and Prayer. Yeah. Oh, really? It was. <laughs> um, but, but, but it was very good grass. <laughs> There's something, you know, I want to comment on what you just said about Reb Shlomo. Because your point is that Reb Shlomo was able to talk to this president of the Orthodox Shia. And he was, without opposing him, he was able to bring him in. But there's something that you were able to do that he was not. Um, you were able to give a reason uh, and, you know, a, a, a new way of practice of looking at halacha. What Shlomo said to us is maybe sometime we'll have time to cut, to, to deal with uh, the, the toenails of our kids. So, what that was accomplishing is that was allowing us to connect with the Orthodox world. But as you pointed out to me a while back, that what it did is it kind of got us confused. Because we thought, well, maybe we really should have a mechitza. And, you know, later on when we're grown-ups, we'll have a mechitza. But right now, we don't have to have it. And your difference, I think, approach was that you you had a, a clarity and a philosophy about what you were doing and why. And that, that uh, allowed people who were your students to um, have a clearer idea of what to do. What, what do you say to that? Uh, first, I want to say that we both were in a situation, when I look at myself, I didn't want to ever be a clear target. That was, that was important, and Shlomo definitely was not a clear target. If you would try and ask, where do you belong, you know, he would come up, he could tell you, do you remember that time in Berkeley when uh, we both were at Hillel House? Yeah. And he had a little book in which he marked down his uh, thoughts and teachings, and so did I. And we switched books, and he started to teach some of the thoughts that I had, and I started to teach some of the thoughts that he had. And it was remarkable because the flavor that they took on was, was so great. Wow. Uh, and if you start looking at, uh, I don't have too many people in Jerusalem today who 
who would be ashamed to say that they were with me at the Aquarium Minion of Berkeley. But I think the thing has changed the other way too. And Rabbi Shlomo would say, first these guys come to me and they get so enthused and they become from and then they don't even want to come to my concerts anymore. And, and that's, really, that's really true. They couldn't have made the transition if Shlomo was not such a bridge. And I just want to say, he was that bridge.